So welcome to workshop seven. This is a video um, uh, part one. We're covering curtain walls uh, and curtain wall systems. We're just going to do a quick overview of some things that you may already know that we went over in the first weekend workshop. It will be kind of a refresher and then we'll get into the custom uh, creation of curtain wall elements in the other parts of uh, this video, uh, of these video tutorials. So I'm just in the example model right now, and I have here uh, just a cropped in area of my curtain wall from that project. And this is a curtain system. If I click on it, you'll see it say curtain system here. There's really no difference between the curtain wall and the curtain system uh, in terms of functionality, the only the, the big difference is, as we learned in the, the weekend session, that the curtain system can be sloped and it can be bent because we can drive it from the faces of a mass. Um, but everything I'm about to show you can be performed on a curtain wall as well as on a curtain system. Now let's start with some definitions. So in architecture, curtain wall is basically a self-supporting facade system that attaches to the slab edge. In Revit, a curtain wall is really just a planar, well, it's a surface uh, that um, hosts, it's sorry, it's a panelized surface with a, that's subdivided into a grid so that it can host um, mullion elements and panel elements. So if I zoom in here, you can see mullions, and you can see the panel. I'll get to one of these. There we go. You can see my panels. Now, some important things to know about how these work is that a mullion is hosted to the grid line. The panel is hosted between grid lines. A mullion is really just. Um, a profile that is swept along a grid segment, so its length is determined by the uh, parameters of your wall, by the distance between the grid segments, and the um, section of that object is determined by the profile in the family. The panel can really be anything. I mean, we we have a couple of types loaded in here already, such as a door, um, uh, solid, glazed, whatever else, but uh, the real fact of the matter is, is that anything could live in here. In fact, if you look at a door, a door is simply, um, whoops, it's because I have doors turned off. Yeah. If you look at a door, a door is really a collection of parts that are parametrically stretched by the curtain wall so that they, um, they're width and height is determined by the, uh, the grids. So let's get into editing. So there are two basic ways to edit a curtain wall. They both involve selecting it. So we can edit the system first, and, um, or we can edit individual components of it. So we're going to start with the system. The system, like most things in Revit, has a collection of um, instance parameters over here key in these. In fact, I'm just going to do this on a, uh, a small curtain wall off to the side because I think it will be a little easier to understand. Um, I'm going to use the same family type. There we go. Isolate this. There we go. So I have my wall here. If I select this, I mean obviously I can make it taller shorter, this stuff should be familiar. But if I select this, I can also choose down here the grid patterns. I can change the justification. So for instance, this is set to justify a beginning, so let's stretch that out a little bit. I change that to center. You'll see that I now have the grid is aligned to the center and then basically spreads from the center outwards. If I choose beginning, the grid's aligned to one edge, what it's calling the beginning edge, and then spreads to the right. If I choose end, it does the opposite. 
the line to the end edge and then spread to the left. Then I can change the angle. And keep in mind, I'm only editing the vertical grid pattern right now. I have the exact same settings that I'm playing with here in the horizontal grid pattern. So I can make this, let's say, 60 degrees. I can do the same for the horizontal. Sixty is not very attractive, maybe 45 instead. Uh, yeah, better, but anyway. So we have that. I have offset. Let's take a look at offset. Let me just undo those real quick. And if I do offset, what this is going to do is it's basically going to take the panel and it's going to offset it from that front edge. So if I do, let's say, uh, two feet, which you'll see here is that I still have it set to beginning. So if I move this edge back, you'll see that. But now it's taken that pattern and just pushed it forward two feet. If I undo it, you'll see that the grid is right there along the edge. So that's kind of the basics. I can do all those exact same things to horizontal as well. Now the other way to edit this is in the type properties. <coughs> Excuse me. So some of the things that I have here in type properties, and actually let me just zoom in on this so you can get a better sense of, of what we're looking at. So let's put some mullions in. So you can see I have the same settings here, my vertical grid pattern, my horizontal grid pattern, and then I have <coughs> vertical and horizontal mullions. So let's create some mullions. My mullions are interior and borders. Border one is simply going to be the borders on the left and the uh, will be the border on either the left or the right, and border two will be the other border. Um, for horizontal, that's going to be the top and the bottom, and then the interior is going to be this. So that's the horizontal interior and the horizontal vertical. So let's start with those. Do square, square. There you go. You can see that I have these mullions. I can kind of continue. Let's say I want to have a, a different rectangular on the edges. These, by the way, are not the only mullions that you can choose from. They're simply the mullions that were loaded into the template. Uh, I'm going to show you how to create your own mullions in a later um, video. So then I have I can choose how I want these to lay out. Right now it's a fixed distance of six, so it's saying, okay, that'll be six feet, six feet, six feet. I could have made it a fixed number. And I actually have to edit that in the instance parameters. So I come back out here. Right now it's going to spread eight um, grid divisions evenly across this. So if I s slim this down, you'll see my mullions get skinnier. I could change this to be 5, change this to be 2, so that's how that works. Next one, I want to zoom in on this. So for edit type, I have my join condition. And for the join condition, right now it's not defined, but it, it's actually uh, vertical grid continuous. But if I change that to horizontal grid conti continuous, let me pull out of here. You can see now it's it has the horizontal mullion is the one that is unbroken and the vertical is broken. So if you want to stress the verticality of your building versus the horizontality, you can control that in here. There are other settings um, as well where you can have the in the exteriors will be unbroken and the interiors uh, will be broken. What else do we have? We can select our curtain panel. I haven't defined one yet, but as you can see, I have kind of a default glaze panel, but I could also choose from uh, any wall type that I have in the building. So if I wanted this to be brick, for instance, I'm going to turn this off so you can actually see what I have. So now I have kind of a brick panelized wall. And now you wouldn't really necessarily call this I mean, this could be a curtain wall system, or you could begin to think of 
um, these mullions is simply the grout in a panelized brick system. So this is kind of getting you into that uh, that thinking about how you want to how your building is going to come together. So this is one of the interesting things about Revit. You can really start to kind of break the rules and use the tools however you like. Now if I want to change an individual panel, let me just go back to uh, my previous type so that you can see what I'm doing. To change individual panels, um, I just tab to the panel. Then I unpin, and now I can change this to, let's make it break again. I can do the same with emollient. Unpin, uh, let's make that circular. And now you can see I have one circular emollient. I can also, once I've unpinned, so now I'm tabbing to select the grid. If I unpin the grid, I can now move this grid around and give it a dimension. If I pin it again, it goes back to the standard setting for my wall. I'll do the same here. And then one last thing before we move into um, custom, creating your own custom curtain walls, is that there's also this setting. So this is another way to configure the grid. It basically allows me um, to choose my angles and to um, set the grid origin. I would not recommend getting too deep into this. I mean, you can kind of see sort of how you move it around right now, but I'm not, I think this, is, this can be more complicated than you may want it to be. Um, it is handy for um, editing uh, curved surfaces, but I'll, I'll get more into that later when we look at pattern-based curtain walls. So that's it for basic curtain wall editing. The uh, next video will be about creating custom mullions. Thank you.